Wait, what's this? And an internet communicator. An iPod. A phone. Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. We all know this story. The story of how the introduction of the iPhone and Android devices revolutionized how we communicate with each other and what we consider as mobile devices. But there's a story before this story. And no, I'm not talking about the LG product. I'm talking about a product from a company most of you don't know about. I'm talking about the first ever smartphone. Before the IBM Siemens came into the scene, mobile devices were vastly different from what we know today. Around that time, the main purpose one would get a phone was for phone call, and in some cases, sent SMS to one another. For instance, the Motorola Dynatech 8000X was very bulky, had very limited battery life, and could only make phone calls. And on top of all that, it was really expensive. At the same time, mobile phones operated on analog networks, which was limited in coverage, meaning you wouldn't get network everywhere. At the same time, the call quality wasn't as good. Also, aside making calls and later sending text messages, they lack internet, camera, and even apps, the ability to have apps on your phone or to store contacts on your phone, which, if you think about it, <laughs> it's crazy. And the crazy part about all of this is around that time, mobile phones were a status symbol. Like, if you have a mobile phone, then you can afford luxury. And also, only business people could afford to have a phone because they're using it for work. The late 1880s and early 1990s were a time of rapid technological change. Computers were becoming more and more common in homes and offices. And phones, even though were bulky and kind of expensive, started gaining popularity. But the thing is, it could do just one thing, make phone calls. And it was around this time when a group of engineers at IBM started asking questions. They started asking, what if mobile phones were more than just communication devices? What if they could send emails? What if they could store contacts? What if they could allow users to write notes? All these questions are kind of no-brainer in today's standards, but back then, it was revolutionary. It was groundbreaking. And one key figure behind this vision was Frank J. Canover Jr. He was an IBM engineer who specialized in miniaturizing computer technology. He and his team believed that a handheld device with touch screen will revolutionize the way people interact with technology. And just like that, IBM started working on a product that would later be known as the world's first ever smartphone. The first prototype of the IBM Siemens was called Angler, and it was developed in the early 1990s. It was meant to be a device that had capabilities of a personal digital assistant, which was something completely new at the time. In 1992, computers were still large and expensive, and most people didn't have exposure to emerging digital networks. A pocket-sized computer that could also make phone calls was a futuristic concept that set the stage for mobile computing. At this point, IBM knew they had something really special, but the question remained, will the world be ready for it? The company decided to unveil the Angular prototype at Comdex 1992, which is a technology trade show we all know today as CES. And the reaction was kind of mixed, because while technology enthusiasts and industry insiders were excited about the possibilities, others viewed it as an expensive novelty, because this was still around the time where mobile phones were viewed as a luxury item. And adding a touchscreen and extra computing features kind of deepened their skepticism. But IBM still had a vision and they stood by it. By 1994, IBM polished up the original design and renamed it into the Siemens Personal Communicator. So whilst I was preparing for this video and doing my research, I had a conversation about this phone with Desi and he was really, really excited about it. So you know what? Let's call him and let him tell us about it. So I'm in the middle of shooting the video about the first ever smartphone and I wanted you to tell me what you were saying about the specs and features when we spoke about it. 
oh man, it was kind of pricey. The Simon dropped in August 1994 and it was around $899 with a contract or $1,099 if you wanted it without one. That's like over $1,700 today. But hey, for that cash, you actually got quite a bit. So you get a 4.5 inch monochrome touchscreen, but you had to use a stylus for that. There was a built-in fax, email, and even a pager. Some cool apps for that time, which included a calculator, a calendar, a world clock, and notepad. It also had a removable battery, but it only gave you around 60 minutes of talk time. And it came with a leather case that made it feel kind of fancy. It's crazy to think that you could fax from a phone in the 90s. Not sure if our current phones can do that. It had a brains, no doubt. But tech just wasn't there yet. Battery life was rough, it was chunky, and most folks weren't ready to drop that kind of money. And that's kind of why it didn't take off. You know, Simon only sold about 50,000 units before it was discontinued in 95. And there were a bunch of reasons for that. Some included the battery life only lasting for like an hour, which was a big issue. It was bulky and heavy, not exactly pocket friendly. The price tag was steep for about $1,100 back then, and it only worked on Bell South Network, so not everyone could use it. Simon was the first to blend phone functions with computing power in one device. That was heck of a combo. It inspired everything from Palm Pilots to Blackberries and eventually the smartphones we can't live without today. That is so interesting and I can't even imagine a world without these smartphones, but I guess it's all thanks to the Siemens. Today, the IBM Siemens is recognized as a trailblazer. Sure, it had a short lifespan and didn't really do well in sales, but it introduced the world to a concept of a smartphone. A device that did not only facilitate voice communication, but also provided access to a suite of digital tools. Cause think about it, the innovations of the IBM Siemens included things like touch screen, the ability to send and receive emails on your phone, having to be able to store contacts on your phone and also have integrated apps. It continues to sort of influence technology today so yeah there you have it how we got the first ever smartphone and how we have smartphones now the journey from then to now and whilst i was shooting this video i noticed that i just passed a thousand subscribers so i'm super grateful to every one of you who have subscribed to my channel and every one of you who actually watch these kind of videos because i spend a lot of time even though i have fun making them i'm really grateful for you guys for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel and coming along this journey with me i'm really grateful and with that said see you guys in the next one Goddamn.